One thing that's intrigued me for several years is the idea of canister Damascus. So I've got these springs. They're the little springs that were holding together all the big springs inside of a mattress. I know that's a strange place to find steel, but I was taking one apart so that I could throw it in the dumpster and wound up with some extra springs that I had in the recycling. Now I tested these springs and they harden very well. I imagine they're just probably music wire from the way they harden and they also etch very dark. So since they etch dark I needed something that would etch light for the powder. I couldn't use just 1095 powder like you hear about most people using. So I found this stuff that was labeled as 1080 with 2% nickel. And I've also seen it called uh, 4600 KC powder. And it's basically 8 points carbon like you'd expect from 1080 and then the 2% nickel thrown in, and then the rest of it's iron. And it's supposed to etch similar to 15N20. Now I found it etched a little bit different. It didn't come out quite as bright. It had more of a pitted antique sort of look to it, but that could be user error on my part. I might not have got it squished together and consolidated as well as possible. We're going to stuff as many springs in there as I can, fill it with powder. And once it's all filled up, we'll go ahead and squish the top down on there and weld it shut. This is just a piece of random square tubing that I had laying around in the scrap pile. I think it came from the leg of a bench. And that's what really intrigues me about canister Damascus is you can take all this random junk that's little bits of steel that aren't big enough to do anything with other pieces of junk that you put it inside of and then throw in some of this nice clean new powder that you can buy and weld it all together and come up with a big block of steel out of a bunch of random junk. Now, I'm going to go straight to the forge shot because I'm not going to subject you all to how I weld things together, which is not professional. You see some sparks flying out of the forge there. That's powdered steel that's on the outside of the can and a little bit of it that was leaking. Now, the first squish I took on this really startled me because it was a lot squishier than expected. I'm kind of used to the way the press feels when it's mashing solid pieces of metal or at least bar stock that's been stacked up and this just kind of went quicker than I expected and squished more so I wound up actually putting a couple creases in the end of the can and didn't come out quite right on that end. I've heard you're supposed to basically consolidate the can down to about half of its original size, at least cross-section dimension. It will elongate some as you do that. Um, I got pretty close to that. I think I got it down to about an inch and a quarter from the original, I think it was a little over, it was two and an eighth inch on the outside diameter to start with. And that's the all squished can laying there cooling on a, a brick. Then we get to the fun part of grinding and chiseling and pounding away at the can to try and take it apart. That took about an hour or so, I think. I didn't really keep track. <laughs> so 
here it is after I got it all out of the can. And this end looks pretty solid. But this end I've got a couple deep gouges I think are going to turn into cold shuts. And this part here, I apparently didn't get enough of the powder packed in tight on it. And there's another one on this side that's a deep gouge that's going to become a cold shut. So I'm probably going to cut the last inch and a half or so off of the end of this. I might weld it together and see if I can get it to weld, flux it up and press it. But the rest of it looks like it's pretty solid. Now this is the little piece I cut off the end. It was about an inch and a half long as I said. I went ahead and ground away some of the mess that was on it. Ground away into some of those grooves and um, ground out some of the parts that were unwelded. And I'm just going to try and squish it out and see about how much I can get out of it that's going to be about an inch and a quarter wide and how thin I can get it down to about 3 sixteenths or so on the press. Quarter inch, 3 sixteenths. And in the end it winds up being about six inches long. It had some cracks at the end because I found that the stuff was, if you were not careful and you squished it too hard it would crack some. So I was a little bit more careful when I got to this larger piece that I didn't overdo it right away and was a little gentler with it, kind of like when you're setting welds, which is what made me think that I may not have gotten hot enough or long enough when I did my main weld in the canister. Or maybe not enough pressure and didn't condense it enough. Not sure. But if I was careful with the press and didn't over squish it too quick, it seemed to consolidate down and get firmer as I was going. And I was basically working at welding heats uh, because I had noticed that on the other piece that it needed to be a little bit more consolidated together. This is a project I would not have tried without the press. I am not adventuresome enough to try and draw out a piece of metal from a canister. That's way more hammering than I want to do. I've injured my shoulders before. I don't want to ever do it again. That's why I bought a press, so I don't have to. And that's just about the whole can drawn out. A little bit more, one more heat, and it should be down to about 3 8 inch thick. Okay, so this is the little end piece that I cut off, and the more I ground on it, the more stuff starts to show up in it. So it's going to be somewhat interesting. I think I can work with this and make something out of it, a small hidden tang knife maybe. Um, which, considering I was thinking it was probably just scrap I was going to be tossing, that's fairly good. And it was enough to encourage me to go ahead and grind off and check the other piece, which one side of is not very interesting yet, but I'm hoping that, again, if I grind into it some more, it's going to bring some more out, because there's some spots you can see some real light, almost shadows of pieces that didn't etch out yet that are starting to show through. But on the other side, it's getting fairly interesting, especially down on like this corner, it's all. So I can definitely work with that. And that piece is about a, still more than a quarter of an inch thick, 16 inches long and about an inch and a half wide. So there's a significant chunk of steel there. So I might be able to get two or three knives out of that. So, at least it's something to try. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pound out a blade, or at least a blade-shaped object, out of that little smaller piece of material that we had there. I went ahead and cut the ends off that had some cracking on them. And I managed to still have a crack 
up on the back of this, but it was where I could grind it out. I but left it forged oversides and didn't really forge it completely to shape because, well, first off, I'm not good enough at forging to do that, but also because I needed to grind out that crack. And this was basically the best test I could think of for the material is to grind it into a shape that looks like a blade and get something close and then we can see how it etched and what it looked like. So. That was the plan, just to go over to the shop and knock out a small, it's a, probably about a four inch blade with a hidden tang. And the same on the tang, I'm only kind of getting it sort of close to uh, size and shape. I'll need to grind in a little bit on the back of it there. I didn't step that down quite enough. Then it's over to the grinder and the coarse belt first to get a profile and then to put a fresher coarse belt on to do the initial primary bevels. Because I decided it was getting way too hot doing it like that so we put a fresh belt on there. One thing I noticed about this material is it didn't seem to throw sparks like other steels do. I don't know if that was something to do with the powdered steel being mostly making up the majority of the blade or why exactly that was the case. Maybe just didn't throw sparks very well because it wasn't hardened at this point. Because it did seem to throw sparks better later when it was hardened up. And I'm basically heating it up and letting it cool back in air to get black again a couple times to kind of almost normalize. That's not really truly normalizing, I don't think. But I think you gotta let it cool all the way down for it to truly be normalized. We're not gonna concern ourselves too much with the details on this one as it's kind of very well. Case file really good. So I'll take it back and off camera just throw it in an oven for a couple hours for temper. So there's a few scratches in it still that I haven't gotten out but since I'm probably not going to finish this into a, a finished knife or at least I don't have any real plans of it right now I'm not going to mess with hours and hours of hand sanding to get those little last few scratches out. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this up and degrease it and take it down and uh, put it in the etch and we'll see what we got out of it and maybe that'll give us an idea of what we can get out of our larger piece that wasn't just the scrap cut off the end like this one was. Well, I'm not sure if it turned out exactly the way I was hoping, but it is somewhat interesting looking, kind of like um, wood that worms have eaten holes in. And the other piece should have more of a pattern than this, a lot denser collection of the springs in it. 
So, if you like this video or even just found it informative, be sure to uh, help out the channel by liking, sharing, or subscribing to us. And also feel free to leave any comments below. Let us know what you think about this.